All right, uh, we're going to talk about factoring to help us get ready for some of the uh, important mathy stuff that we're going to do in calculus. We're going to do a lot of math uh, involving factoring, so we need to be really, really, really good at that. We're going to talk about the four different types of factoring that you're most likely going to see during this calculus class. There's, a, there's many types of factoring, but the four main types of factoring are usually going to go in this order. Reverse distribution. That's when you pull stuff out. You try to find a greatest common factor in common with all of the things that you have in a polynomial and you can see if you can bring that out. Okay. Defoil. That's basically the opposite of foil. It's exactly what it's called. You have a, a three, maybe two term, but usually a three term quadratic and you try to find two things whose sum is the middle number and whose product is the third number. Then you have quadratics with leading coefficients. That's the same type of thing where you have a trinomial and your first quadrat or your first term is a five. Then what? And then we have factor by grouping, which is usually a four term, sometimes a six term thing. Let's practice them all. Remember, when you factor something, you're trying to turn a polynomial into something times something. And usually the purpose of that is if you're given some type of fraction and you want things to disappear. So how can I turn that into something times something? Well, this is one of those reverse distribution cases where you're trying to find a number that's in common with all of them. Not only do I have a number in common with all of them, two, but I also have an X in common with all of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring out a two and an X. When you bring something out, you are left behind a product, okay? When you factor, you're turning a polynomial into something times something or even more than that. Now, when I take a 2x, I'm literally dividing 2x out of each of these terms here. So when I remove or divide a 2x from 4x, I'm left with just a 2 because two divided by four is two, x divided by x is one, two times one is two. If I remove or divide out a two x from eight x cubed, eight divided by two is four, and x cubed divided by x is x squared. You're removing an x from x cubed. If I divide a two from two x from two x squared, the two divided by two gives me no coefficient or an invisible coefficient of one and removing an x from x squared leaves me with just an x. So if I wanted to check my work, I would distribute this 2x to that entire green parentheses, uh, and that's why this is considered reverse distribution. The next problem, what can I take from this guy? Well, it looks like as far as numbers go, I have a 25 in common in both terms, so I'm gonna remove a 25, I also have two X's in common with both terms, so I'm gonna remove an X squared. When I do that, when I divide a 25 from a negative 50, I'm left with negative two. When I divide my X squared from X cubed, I have an X. And when I divide a 25 X squared from 25 X squared, I'm not left with zero, I'm left with one. Plus one, in fact. Just like when you go to a wedding. And of course you can uh, do reverse distribution or regular old distribution to make sure you did it right. That's type one of factoring. So when you look at something and you realize, okay, well, let's see if I can pull out a common factor and realize you can't, that's when you move on to your next option. And the next option is defoil. And what defoil looks like is you're gonna given you're gonna be given a um, quadratic trinomial, sometimes a quadratic binomial. And what that means is you have three terms and it's a quadratic. And you see if you can bring something out. Well, I, I can't. So then what do I do? Think of two numbers whose sum is seven and whose product is 12. Whose sum is seven, whose product is 12. Let me see. Well, if the product is 12, it's either going to be two positives or two negatives, but the, they add up to positive seven, it's going to be two positives. So two numbers that add up to seven and multiply out to 12 are going to be three and four. So when I factor this, I'm left with X plus three, 
and x plus 4. The reason why I call this defoil is because the way you could check this is you would foil uh, these two factors out. x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. 3 times x is 3x. So 4x, 3x makes 7x. And 3 times 4 is 12. Great, I did it right. I'm doing the same exact thing. Can I pull something out? No. Do I have a trinomial and a quadratic? Yes and yes. So I need to come up with two numbers that add up to 2 and multiply out to negative 8. So if it multiplies out to a negative, I need a positive and a negative in order to do that. The larger number is going to be uh, positive. Why? Well, because they add up to a positive. So I'm going to have an x plus and an x minus. The two numbers that add up to 2 and multiply out to negative 8 are going to be x plus 4 and x minus 2. Again, it's plus 4 and minus 2 because they add up to positive 2 yet multiply out to negative 8. If you were to switch the signs, they would add up to negative 2. That's not what I want. Okay. So we need to come up with two numbers whose sum is uh, negative 7 and whose product is negative 8. So I'm going to need a positive and a negative, two numbers that multiply out to negative 8, yet add up to 7. So I have a positive and a negative. The negative has to be larger. And the only two numbers that I can think of that multiply out to negative 8, yet add up to negative 7, are going to be a combination of 8 and 1. The 8 has to be negative because negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. If I were to reverse it, I would get plus 7, similar to the last problem. Now I need to come up with two numbers, and again, I can't pull anything out, so my next option is defoil. Two numbers that multiply out to 25 and add up to negative 10. Okay, x minus 5 and x minus 5. However, even though that's factored, it's not factored enough. This is like me saying x times x. Well, what's x times x? x squared. So what's x minus 5 times x minus 5? x minus 5 squared. So that's that factored out. Hmm. Now, I have myself a quadratic, but I don't have a trinomial. And I know what I said before is it could be a trinomial or it could be a binomial, which this is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some imagining. x squared plus 0x minus 100. I need two numbers that add up to 0 and multiply out to negative 100. Well, the only way that you can do that is you have a negative and a positive. And those numbers have to be the same because they're going to add up to zero. So the two numbers that are the same that multiply out to 100, the square root of 100, which is 10. One of them has to be positive. One of them has to be negative. This is called difference of squares. If you have a square minus a square like I have here, you're going to get the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term times the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term, vice versa. Okay, difference of squares always gives you x plus a number, x minus the same number. Oh, look what I have here. I can bring out a 6. And when I do that, I'm left with x squared minus x minus 6. Now, what I have to do is I can't just be like, all right, I factored once. I guess I'm done. No, 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 no. If you factor out a number and you realize that, wait a minute, what I have left over still looks like one of those defoil problems. Can I come up with two numbers that add up to negative invisible 1 and multiply out to negative 6? Sure I can. x minus 3 and x plus 2. Negative 3 and positive 2 add up to negative 1 and multiply out to negative 6. Don't forget the 6 out in front. 
So that'll happen a lot too, where you could factor out a number or a variable uh, or both, uh, kind of like what we did with the first problems, where I was able to pull out a number and a variable. All right. Let's see what number I can pull out of this one. I have 8, 2, and negative 3. I can't bring out a number out of this one. Hmm. So this is one of those, can you factor this uh, and uh, not bring something out? This is one of the uh, leading coefficient is not one quadratics. So a lot of this is guess and test. Okay, there are ways that you could take the two and rip it apart and make it something different, but I just like to guess and test. And this is what I'm gonna do. The only way that I can multiply out to negative three is if I have a either positive one and negative three, or uh, let's do this, let's do this. I'm gonna make it positive three. Now, why am I doing positive three? I'm just guessing here. I need an X here and I need an X here. Okay, let me give myself a little bit more space right there. And what we have to do is we have to think of numbers that multiply out to 8 and insert here. And by inserting those numbers, if I were to foil in my head, would I get a uh, 2? So I'm going to put a 2 here and a four here and see if that works out. If I do that, I get eight X squared. So if I FOIL it out, I get eight X squared. Great. Minus four X plus six X. So my first guess was right. And then minus three. So this is it. I could have tried a bunch of these out. I could have tried two X plus three and four X minus one and found out that no, nah, that didn't do it. So I had to try it out on my own. These problems are usually trial runs. They're uh, guess and test. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, keep moving. And you might find out that some of these problems are just not factorable. And if that's the case, then, well, that stinks. Not in this case, though. It is factorable. The last thing that we're going to look at is we're going to look at factoring by grouping. Now, I'm giving you a uh, four-term quint or quart cubic. A four-term cubic. What you're going to do to factor by grouping is this. Take the first two things and put it in a parenthesis. x cubed minus 2x squared, close parenthesis. Always a plus sign in the middle. Always, 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 always a plus sign in the middle. The second two terms, or I guess the final two terms, are going to be 5x minus 10. 5x minus 10. Now, take each parentheses and see if you can factor something out of each parentheses. In the first parentheses, I can factor out an x squared. So I'm going to do that. Factor out an x squared. That leaves me with an x minus 2. In the second parentheses, I can factor out a 5. So positive 5. And that leaves me with no way. x minus 2. Now let's move this up. If this was, if this was x squared, a plus five a, we would be like, oh, just bring the a out. And if you bring the a out, that leaves me with x squared plus five. Well, I don't have an a. Instead of a, I have x minus two. So what we're noticing is both of these factors, both of these things have an X minus two in common. So what I'm gonna do is pull out an X minus two. And when I pull out an X minus two, I'm left with, so that is removed and that is removed. And once it's removed, I'm left with an X squared plus five. Take a look at what you have. I can't factor any further. That's not a difference of squares. I'm done. Let's factor by grouping. Mm -hmm. Let's do one more factor by grouping problem and that'll be the end of this, uh, this vid, this vid. All right, so I have two terms to start out. Six X cubed 
plus 3x squared. Always, 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 always put a plus sign in the middle. Even though there's a minus sign there, put a plus sign in the middle and then make that negative 8x minus 4. So what can I factor out of the first parentheses? Well, I have a 3 in common in both. I have an x squared in common. And when I bring that out, I have 2x plus 1. Now your goal when you do factor by grouping is to try to get both parentheses the same. I could bring out a 4 and that would be great. But you know what would be even better is if I brought out a negative 4. If I bring out a negative 4, then I'm left with 2x plus 1. Now I have 2x plus 1 in common in both of these objects. I'm going to bring out the 2x plus 1. And what I have left over is 3x squared minus 4. I look at what I have. I can't factor anymore. Oh, this was so very close to difference of squares, but it wasn't difference of squares. So that's it. I'm done. Okay? And that's factoring. We're going to do a lot of factoring in calculus, a ton of it. Uh, it's probably, especially in the first two chapters, but uh, you need to be good at factoring in order for you to be good at calculus. Capiche? All right. Bye.